Welcome, Scrum Masters, to Daily, Weekly, and Monthly Rhythm. This talk is the key talk in this section. What we're going to do in this section is to create the nitty-gritty of our routine as Scrum Masters. So we're going to take some of the abstract concepts that we developed in the last section on mental models and bring it down to our day-to-day -day work. Let's start off by reviewing where we are now. So in section two, you created your Scrum Master mental model. You know what beliefs, thoughts, ideas, and images you apply in your work as a Scrum Master. You know how your mental model influences your actions. And you know that all actions have intended and unintended consequences. So you did a lot of hard work in that section, so congratulations. So to review, you now have your mental model. You know that those actions that come from the mental model have intended and unintended consequences. So over time, you'll modify your mental model, which will change your actions, which will change the intended and unintended consequences. In addition, you also watched me as I developed two aspects of my mental model, namely the needs-based prime directive and non-predictive decision-making. As a reminder, you can add those things to your mental model or you can simply use them as examples of how to develop your mental model. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do the nitty gritty of being a Scrum Master. What do you do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis as a Scrum Master? What are your habits? So the outcome of this section of this week is that you will know exactly what habits support your success and you will construct daily, weekly, and monthly checklists. So here's an example of the outcome of this section. A daily rhythm, a weekly rhythm, a monthly rhythm checklist. On your daily rhythm, you might have items such as examine team's task board, talk to A people, and we'll describe that in this talk. Make an entry in observations journal. And also, I'll describe the observations journal. The weekly rhythm might be talk to the product owner about the backlog, talk to the B team, work with management on removing impediments. The monthly rhythm, update the learning backlog, and we'll discuss that, prepare for release planning, participate in a company scrum event. So you'll have these three lists once you finish watching all of the videos and doing all of the homework assignments in this section. So what is it exactly that we're doing here? We're applying the Scrum Master philosophy to ourselves. We're running through the plan, do, check, adjust cycle on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, just like we recommend our team. Just a small note here. Every Scrum Master I know has a daily rhythm. Some of them, however, substitute the weekly and monthly rhythm for other time periods. For example, you might have a sprint rhythm instead of a weekly rhythm and a release rhythm instead of a monthly rhythm. So do what's best for you. So to prompt your thinking on this subject, I'm going to cover 11 habits, which are listed here. The ROI analysis of impediments, the concept of the ABC team, self-appreciation and gratitude, self-regulation, anti-stress, observations journal, emotions journal, expectations journal, impediment backlog, improvement backlog, learning backlog, and finally, reflection and summary. So these 11 habits are habits that I've personally found useful and I've seen other Scrum Masters use them to great effect. You will have your own habits. These are just some ideas that you can include in your daily, weekly, and monthly habits. You will create your own and you might modify these as well. So in this presentation, I'll provide one slide of information for each of these 11 habits. And in the rest of the section, there will be additional videos for some of these habits. So let's get started. The ROI analysis of impediments. So as a Scrum Master, you will be looking at impediments all of the time, and occasionally you will need to create a business case that describes the business value that your company will receive if it removes an impediment. So that's what this habit is referring to. And it's a habit that I recommend implementing on a monthly basis. So here's an example. Let's say that your team needs a team room. And so you want to remove that impediment. And the business says, 
what's the return on investment of that? And so here's the analysis that you might do. The cost of creating a team room is 10K. There is evidence that it will improve productivity on the team by 5%. There are 10 people on the team and the total loaded cost of each person is 200K. Total loaded cost is salary plus benefits plus overhead plus everything else. So that means that carrying the team for a year is cost $2 million. And if there's a productivity increase of 5%, that means that the company is gaining 100K per year. So the net gain in the first year is that 100K gain minus the 10K cost of creating a team room for a total profit of 90K. So this is an example of a habit that you might implement on a monthly basis. You might create an ROI analysis approximately once a month. So that's the first habit. The second habit, ABC team. For this habit, you create three lists of people. The A team consists of people you talk to every day. The B team consists of people you talk to at least once per week. The C team consists of people you talk to at least once per month. And so you, of course, add the A team to your daily rhythm, the B team to your weekly rhythm, and the C team to your monthly rhythm. And of course, this applies to all rhythms. And this is something that you can get started doing right now. You can create those lists today and start implementing the daily, weekly, monthly rhythm for the A team, B team, and C team. The next habit is self-appreciation and gratitude. You think about what you are thankful for. This might take 10 or 15 minutes, and often this is written down. There's just an enormous amount of evidence that gratitude is a life-affirming activity. So here's one academic who writes, gratitude is an emotional state and an attitude toward life that is a source of human strength in enhancing one's personal and relational well-being. So in this habit, which I suggest re implementing on a weekly basis, you just sit down and spend 10 to 15 minutes writing down what you're grateful for. The next habit, self-regulation or anti-stress. So this is a habit that helps you stay balanced. Two examples that I use are meditation and the heart math M wave. So meditation has been found to increase alertness and increase calmness. There was just a recent Bloomberg article published in March of 2013, which talks about soldiers who meditate and the benefits that they get. The HeartMath M-Wave is a biofeedback device that helps you to increase the coherence of your heart rhythm. So I recommend implementing such a habit on a daily basis. The next habit is the observations journal. The observations journal is a listing of facts that you have observed. For example, let's say that you're in the daily stand-up and you write right down, Jim arrived at the daily stand-up at 9.03 a.m. The daily stand-up starts at 9 a.m. It's very important that you keep the observations in your observations journal to observations or facts. For example, if you wrote down Jim arrived late to the daily stand-up, that's not an observation, it's not a fact. Jim could disagree and say, three minutes late is actually on time. So you need to write down just the objective facts in the observations journal. What I do is I just carry around this journal with me, and whenever I have an observation, I write it down. And you'll have a chance to practice this in the homework assignment. I recommend implementing this habit on a daily basis. The next habit is the emotions journal. The emotions journal is a listing of emotions that you are feeling in the moment, right now. For example, let's say that you've just walked out of a challenging review session with all of the team. I might write down, I'm concerned, worried, upset, curious. That's all it is. It's just a list of emotions that I'm feeling. There's no analysis or discussion or problem solving. So it just takes a couple of minutes. And again, I carry the emotions journal with me. On a daily basis, I write things down. The expectations journal. The expectations journal is a description of the expectations that you have going into an event and a description of what actually happened. It's critical to over time look for patterns. When are your expectations met? When are your expectations not met? Are there certain people that do certain things always? For example, is there a manager who always asks the same three questions? Is there a team member who always is excited about the same two things? 
So look for patterns. So here's an example. Let's say that you're walking into the dev manager meeting. This is a conversation with the dev manager. He's just called you in and wants to discuss how things are going on the team. So you write down in your expectations journal before the event, you write down the dev manager will discuss the team's drop in velocity. Now what actually happens in the meeting is that the dev manager discusses the sprint burndown chart. She did not discuss the velocity. So you write that down. Okay. And so over time, you'll have a better understanding of how your expectations actually match reality. And you'll be able to search for patterns. Think of this as a little bit of an experiment. You indicate what your hypothesis is or what your expectation is. And then you actually run the experiment. You go to the event and then you write down what your learning or results are. The next item is the impediment backlog. So the impediment backlog is an ordered list of the team's impediments. So ordered means ordered in the order of importance according to the team. Almost always it will have the date at which you entered the impediment. And this is the work that you do as a scrum master to keep track of impediments. So I recommend revisiting the impediment backlog on a weekly basis, but you'll certainly want to update the impediment backlog on a daily basis, for example, when a team member indicates that there's an impediment in the daily standup. The next habit is the improvement backlog. The improvement backlog is an ordered list of improvements that you are working on with the team. So this goes hand in hand with the impediment backlog. The impediment backlog will have the entire list of impediments. The improvement backlog will have the things that you are working on. So this is in some sense your to-do list from the perspective of the team. I recommend looking at this on a weekly basis. And there you see an example. For example, you want to work on calling the IDE vendor because you need to get additional IDE licenses. And you started doing that on February 19th. The learning backlog is an ordered list of items that you want to learn about and how you want to learn about them. So this is your personal improvement plan. It'll often contain books, courses, user group meetings, and conferences. So here's an example. You say that you want to learn new retrospective techniques, and you're going to do it by reading the Derby Larson book on retrospectives. You say that you want to improve facilitation skills, so you're going to take this Udemy course on improving those facilitation skills. So congratulations on taking this course and moving against your learning backlog. I suggest revisiting your learning backlog on a monthly basis. The final habit I'll discuss is reflection or summary. Reflect back and summarize events and learning. I do this on a daily basis at the very end of the day. I make sure to update all of my journals and all of the backlogs. I make sure I have gone through my daily rhythm list. So those are the 11 habits I wanted to discuss. Here's how the homework plays with these habits. Assignments one through three are about creating your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythm. Assignment number four is about setting up your expectations journal and emotions journal. Assignment number five is about the observations journal. Assignment number six is about the learning backlog. You'll create the learning backlog and make a few entries. All of the assignments are 30 minutes this week. I recommend doing one per day. So watch all of the videos on one day, and then the remainder of the week is devoted to those assignments. A couple of final notes, okay? You will certainly create new habits. I strongly recommend that you consider having a daily rhythm. You may want to change the weekly and monthly rhythm. For example, you may want to have a sprint rhythm instead of a weekly rhythm or a release rhythm instead of a monthly rhythm. And finally, develop a way to track your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms. Two ideas here are to have a personal tax board or to use getting things done or a similar time management approach. So let's summarize. In this lecture, you've learned about the value of creating daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms. You have learned 10 specific habits that you may want to include in your rhythms, and you are now ready to set up your own rhythms by applying the homework. Feel free to ask questions in the question area or use your one-on-one -on -one call or the monthly coaching call to get questions answered. Have a great time this week.